Welcome to episode 8 of Regina District Industry Education Council Entrepreneurial Spotlight. Today, we're talking to the solar gods. Today I have Brendan Owens from Prairie Sun Solar. Uh, you might know him from another company or maybe even the Rams football club. Possibly. He's got a shoddy past. <laughs> um, how do you introduce yourself? What are you, owner, co-founder? Yeah, co-owner. Co-owner, okay, cool. Um, tell us a little about yourself. Where'd you go to school? From Regina? Uh, yeah, born and raised in Regina. Went to high school at O'Neill. It was a former Titan. You, you don't have to admit that. Yeah, we're pretty uh, <laughs> pretty sharp group, NOD, which is always a positive. Um, <laughs> we might have to cut the interview there. <laughs> I kid, I kid. <laughs> Love you, O'Neill. Uh, went to the University of Regina. And yeah, that's where my school path has taken me. Engineering grad already showed us he has a ring. So I went to school as an engineer, but now you're a business owner. When did you start your first business? Oh, real business or like when I was 10? <laughs> <laughs> Were you scamming people in your neighborhood? Were you? <laughs> oh, we used to cut lawns as kids and we'd sell glow sticks on Canada Day and do flyers. So we started early. You sold glow sticks on Canada oh, yeah. Day. Canada Day. Enterprising we'd entrepreneur. We'd buy them on... Uh, on eBay, and it was like, I don't know, our parents would fund the, the initial purchase. <laughs> and uh, it would be like 100 bucks, we'd get four in a glow six, and then on Canada, we were selling them for a dollar. And it would be something like, we'd come up with really goofy slogans that were down, but worked great. They're like, glow stick for a dollar, give me a holler. And it worked. I'd buy one. <laughs> wow. That's funny. So, how old were you when that happened? Uh, we were probably around, I don't know, 10. <laughs> 10 to 13. So you, there. Got, you, you got the inspiration and then uh, what would have been your first legitimate business you started? Uh, I would have been a roofing company. So throughout high school, I worked for a couple different places. I worked at uh, a roofing company in the city. And then I also was a cook in a kitchen at Smitty's back in the day. And then... Uh, On Norman View? Norman View Smitty's, yeah. No way. Yeah. Great job. Love it. Unbelievable breakfast. Yeah. Huh? Uh, Optimum Roofing, when did you start that? So that would have been first year of university. So roofing company from the experience from high school, it was kind of a summer job and then friends and family started asking for, you know, roofs obviously, cause they knew we did it. And we started that business while going to university. And was that by yourself or? I had a partner in it. So one partner, Derek Gallagher, he's still running the business today and it's, it's going well. I sold my portion of that business about three years ago to focus on Prairie Sun Solar and the Solar Energy Group. And uh, you technically, you still share an office, correct? Yes. They haven't kicked you out yet. No, no, they can't <laughs> get rid of me yet. So yeah, we're still partners in another business of owning the building and sharing the space. So it's, uh, it's a pretty cool deal to still have great relationships. And... and so after that, three years ago, you start Prairie Sun Solar then, correct? Correct. And by yourself? Partners? Partners. Partners. I've always enjoyed, a big thing that I've always liked about entrepreneurship is just being able to work with people you enjoy that are good at what they do. So Derek, my first business partner in the roofing business, best buddy growing up, it was fun going to work every day. Next business, started off with a partner, uh, Dylan Toniello knows the electrical side and that's a big part of a partnership too is each person has to have value in what they do and he knew the trade in and out and I knew obviously roofing background, engineering, so I could help on some design as well as tie-ins with roofs. So it kind of was just a nice fit and you got to be able to enjoy who you work with. So I think that to me is more important than you know, a big part of what you do. What What do you say to people that say you have to start on your own or you shouldn't give any equity away? You uh, you should really be doing your own thing. What would you say to that? Knowing that you've now started a couple businesses with partners. To each their own. If you're going to have a partner, you need to 100% trust them. If you don't have that trusting factor, then things can go south. So make sure whoever you're partnered up with, you trust them. And two, there's value. They have to have a skill set that you don't. You try and align yourself with people that you know aren't you know exactly similar on the same skill set. You try and align with areas that are your weakness and try and match those to become a strength. Like people that like to wear black and flowered shirts. Exactly. Exactly. 
did you do you think you always had this idea of being an entrepreneur or do you think it just kind of went off and i it's odd to me that you went to engineering school while you were already running a business because to me you go to school to figure out what you want to do in business but from the sounds of it you already knew what you did um how did like when did the idea come up and was it like this oh oh i'm gonna be a business owner or was it just gradual yeah honestly it was pretty gradual we just kind of jumped into it so first year university i'm taking petroleum systems engineering i'm playing football with the rams and my first year of university was covered through scholarships just from being on the football team and having good marks in high school and then going into my second year marks were definitely a little more difficult going to the university level there's definitely a, a bit of a steeper learning curve coming into that sector and we uh just kind of kind of came to a point like, okay well i think we got to start making some money here to pay for school because i didn't have you know a scholar well we had the university ram scholarship but it only kept covered 50 percent of your education and you had to you know meet a minimum i think 65 or 70 average to get that so the second time i took the class i had one of the highest marks of the class it's nailed it learning those lessons because <laughs> you're not going to pass everything but what do you do after that right and so it's a good life lesson we kind of it was one of those things we just jumped in and we did you know maybe you know 20 roofs for friends and family like wow we actually made some like decent money doing this we should maybe try this full time and run it as an actual business name and so we put a business name together and we worked and while we were going to university and we grew each year by honestly probably a hundred percent year after year after year for about five years and it just kind of grew and by the time you know i was done playing football after five years and i took my time with engineering i ended up doing that over seven years because i didn't really need to rush to get that degree because like well we already have a stable business i don't per se but yeah. I still wanted to finish that because I think it's still important to get an education. And if I ever want something else to fall back on, maybe I don't want to do roofing down the road and I can roll back into that engineering role. Cool. Throughout, um, was there a hard moment or uh, just a difficult moment where you kind of said, you know what, I want to give up. Let me just go get a job at an engineering firm. Let me just, you know, let me just go get a job for a change instead of trying to make my own. Did you have any moments like that? Oh, there's tons of those moments, no question. I mean, uh, the entrepreneurship side isn't easy. There's really good highs that feel great, but there's also lows. There's times when you're scrambling for work and you're worried about keeping your, you know, your guys employed, your self-employed, your self-fed. And when you're on those lows, you're like, would it be easier to just, you know, work a nine to five? But um, I don't know. I think at that time, you also got to look at the benefits of working for yourself. You get to run your own schedule. Yes, you are attached to the phone at all times. Your email, it's all kind of linked into you. But you can also just leave for two weeks and do something. <laughs> and you don't have to tell anybody. You, you can still answer you your phone. Yourself. <laughs> yeah, you can still answer the call. And you might be on the road or somewhere else. And it's it's awesome to be able to have that. That freedom, I think, is worth it for me. So what, what helps you get out of those hard moments? Is it that reminding yourself that you do have that freedom that you can go hang out with, your, with the fam for a couple of weeks and take that time off? Yeah, I mean, that's that's definitely a big thing is being able to have that that, that holiday and, and being able to leave and do what you want. But also, if you're running low on work and you're doing those things, you've got a pretty smart network and you've kind of built up. And I would say a, a big thing of what I've learned is the network that we built from playing football, going to university, like hanging out with friends in high school and doing whatever you did in the evenings, you built all those relationships. And then when it comes down to your business and you learn those skills, then you have friends that don't have those skills and they need work done. So then they'll call on you and you just oh, kind of basically grow and you always learn that there's always an opportunity out there. You just need to find it. That's a, like a great note that leads into my next question about culture. Um, it sounds like you have an inadvertent, you've created a culture here, whether you like it or not, of engaging people in growing business or growing what you're doing. Um, but on top of that too, I know you don't just do business. You're on, are you on the Rams alumni board? Yeah. Or at least you help yeah. out there. Um, and that's how we really connected after we worked with Prairie Sun is, is through the Rams alumni board. But um, what do you say about culture and how do you treat that within Prairie Sun Solar and even your time at Optimum? Um, how do you view culture and, and your view on how do you create a positive culture? Uh, I think, I would say the leaders at the top always have to they have to wear the most responsibility. And I would say lots of times they might have a face that's, you know, not, doesn't want to smile today, but 
if you don't smile, then the people underneath you are not going to smile. So you kind of have to build that and always be looking at the positives. You can, different people run their business different ways. I always like to be in the positive with whoever we work with and who's on our team and try and make sure people feel motivated. And you only feel motivated by, you know, positive reinforcement and you need to have conversations. If someone's not performing well or doing what they should be doing, you have to know that type of person and how they want to receive that message. Some people, they want the hard, like, come on, you're not doing this right. And you got to grill them and, and tell them like, you got to do this. And then they respond better to it. But you do that to, you know, Joe over here and he curls up and he's done. He's finished. He can't take that. So you got to know how to reach out to each pe each person. And that kind of rolls into a little bit of HR life skills. Almost like too. behavioral psychology of, of how to get the best out of a team. It's not treating everyone the same. It's actually trying to figure out how to treat each person. Yeah, everybody's different. There's a different mindset and how people respond to any kind of criticism. And it's being cognizant of the people you talk to and their reactions and their behavior. And, and you kind of feel that just through, I don't know, being a human and working with people. You make mistakes. You might say something to someone, you see they react and it didn't go that well. And you're like, okay, well that's, that was bet, the wrong move. I better say no offense. Oops. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, you follow up and you're gonna make mistakes, but it's okay to say sorry. That's fine too. You don't have to always be, you know, a straight, hard, tough. It's, you can make mistakes. Just try not to make the same one. Um, same thing on culture still. There's some unique things about the office here. Uh, I know when I first walked into the office, there are some definite different things about it. How do you, I think some of the things you do are, you create an atmosphere for a positive culture. Um, where did that come from? Or was that just a, you liked ping pong, so you built your own ping pong table. <laughs> We're sitting on a ping pong table if you can't see right now. Yeah, so I think a big part of back into going to work is having fun and taking a break. Sometimes you can be in the middle of something and working hard and then you just kind of hit a wall. And then if you take that mental break and we played a ton of ping pong and one thing with the roofing side is it was pretty seasonal. So from March and when the sun starts coming up, the snow's off the ground, we worked hard till December and it was nonstop, seven days a week kind of grind. And then you get to January to March and it's kind of your reset period. And it's like, well, what should we try and figure out now? And you could, you know, continue to work and try and build on your business, but we kind of built more on a team thing. We bought a ping pong table, our initial one, and uh, we all got really good at ping pong. <laughs> we were terrible when we first started, absolutely terrible, but we put in the effort and played each other every day and then you got good. And then now we've kind of incorporated it just into like our daily work, work schedules where it's like, okay, well, let's take a quick break. And I would say my only problem is now is that we've got so good is bringing on someone that's new that's not so good. No, I, I was going to say, like, you have, you have out, outsiders come in that beat you right away that it, it gets really <laughs> embarrassing. Yeah. Um, but honestly, that's a really good point. I just shared an article from Inc. Magazine on Steve Jobs and Einstein were both famous for taking breaks. They always took brain breaks. They went for walks. They messed around. They fooled. They liked to, uh, they were fans of life, I would say. They really liked to, to embrace um, doing what they felt was right. And, and I don't know, I just see some workaholics sometimes thinking that you need to work more to get more done which to me is wrong. You actually just need to take more brain breaks to allow your brain to go, oh, I'm allowed to think again. So yeah, I'm a, also a big fan of ping pong and beating you. Yeah, yeah, don't work yourself miserable. and <laughs> You do always leave angry, Jeff. That's only because you don't play ping pong. That's not true if this doesn't get edited out of the video. Um, if you had a moment, you've been in business for a while now. You have been a part of two companies. If you got to talk to yourself 10 years ago, what would you tell that little that little monster it's it's a journey <laughs> there's going to be lots of ups and downs and learn fast don't make the same mistake i mean i feel like what we did there's not too much i would change i, I actually really enjoyed every step that we did i mean it might have been trying to learn more throughout the process enjoy it more you don't just have to work consistently every day as, as hard as you always do you can still enjoy it and uh yeah i I would say I, I kind of find the biggest, most rewarding part in it is kind of working with people and passing those skills on. I know I've talked to some former players on the Rams that are now running businesses and they'll come to me with questions on how they can, you know, what they should do. And for me, that feels good to be able to share those moments and be, I went through this, this is what I recommend. And, you know, watching people soak that up, it's, it's a good feeling. I could even see in the future people that want to sell a part of the business 
but still remain a part of the business, almost like your transition. Because to me, you don't see that very often in business because generally when someone leaves, it's not pretty. And so I just, I think what, what you guys have done between yourself and Derek, I just, I think there's a cool story to be had there or a teaching moment for someone else that says, look, I want to move on, but I don't want to screw the relationship. Can you help with that? Um, yeah, that's a cool, uh, I, I don't want to discount what you guys have done there. Cause I, I, again, I think it's very rare in business. Still, you know, involved in roofing. I'm a journeyman roofer as, a, as well, a red seal journeyman and have a pretty strong knowledge base in that sector. And so if there's ever technical questions or help that's needed, I can be there to support Derek in that area. And you wouldn't believe how many times I get called about a roof and a roof in question. And I got to give it to someone because <laughs> I don't want to do them anymore. Right. And so it's nice to be able to give it to someone that, you know, you can trust and they'll execute because you don't want to give, you know, a recommendation and have that person not do well. For right? sure. And same thing. So Derek gets, you know, a call and all of a sudden I say, okay, well, who would you recommend for solar? You guys do solar. And it's like, okay, well now we can play off that. So you yeah. kind of build that network that you can share. And I like that. And that so. What's your biggest accomplishment today? I don't know. It's, it's being able to just support your own family and being able to take care of them financially every day and be able to enjoy what you do and, you know, not be able to put so much pressure. I think we've been lucky in the fact that we do well enough that we don't necessarily both have to be at work. So one of us can be, you know, home with the kids and take care. And if I want, I can go home for lunch every single day and I can set that time, my own schedule, and I can leave work and be done early. I can go late. I think that freedom and that schedule, I think is, is I would say probably the most accomplishment where it's gone. What advice would you give to a, a grade 12 student that's a little unsure of their future, maybe wants to get into engineering, maybe not, maybe wants to be a roofer, maybe not. What would you say to that person in grade 12 right now going out into the work world? Uh, I would say don't stress out about what you want to do and, and where you're going to be. I mean, we all have goals from when they started. I certainly didn't think I would be a roofer. I didn't know I would be an engineer. I didn't know I'd be in solar. Let your, you know, do what you want to do and enjoy what you want to do and you'll slowly get to the path of where you want to be. If you think you want to try something, try it. It's not that hard to, to just get in. And if you don't like it, don't do it somewhere else you have a very nonchalant way of saying that and i could just imagine a grade 12 person be like how can you just say just try it but in your world you did try it and it worked out really well in some several aspects but um there's certain things you're going to enjoy and like i mean lots of people i know and some of my best friends are hands-on they're trades guys and they're through and through and that's an awesome space to be some people no chance they don't want to touch a tool they strictly want to go into business or education or arts and it doesn't really matter where you're at just find out what you like and move into that sector that you can slowly find that you're good at i mean if you're in sales and you're talking to people and you find it's uncomfortable and you don't like it you don't have to stay there but just learn from that and understanding that there's so many different levels in an entrepreneurial business of so marketing you can find a ton of different spaces in there there's HR, there's accounting, there's, you know, just dealing with your employees every day, business strategy, business development. If you're not sure about what angle to do, just do them all. Try, try. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and just get involved. That's the biggest thing. Get involved in things. So we're here talking with Brandon Owens. You went to engineering school, correct? Correct. So they teach you to drive trains and is it all about locomotives or what's it all about? Yeah, that was the first class. Just locomotives around the track we got have you seen the cn trains around here and and pulling the if you can pull someone's horn um i just want to say thanks for having us it's been a great video it's been great interviewing you um hopefully you learned something till next time